In this video, I'd like to talk about academic honesty, which is one of the, you know, just the foundational concepts for higher education, the idea of academic integrity and academic honesty. So really important discussion to have early on in your college career here and early on in our discussion of communication. So the principles of academic honesty rest on these five things, basically honesty, trust, fairness, respect, and responsibility. So let's take a look at each of these things individually and break them out a little bit on their own. So as far as honesty, really, I mean, one of the foundational things with honesty, is, as we know in life in general, is just not lying. You know, tell the truth. Be honest. That means that means being honest about the information that you're presenting in any project or any paper or any research that you're doing. Just and 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 also uh, being honest about you know, if you miss class, why are you missing class? Was, was it that you overslept or was it that you have a legitimate doctor's excuse or something like that? We need to be honest. Um, with each other um, so that we can build, as we'll talk about in a second, that uh, that foundational trust as well. So uh, lying is obviously a major violation of academic honesty. Falsification of documents is another one. So uh, falsifying things like major things like transcripts and, and uh, you know, things like that would be obviously flagrant and massive violation of ac academic honesty. But so are things like falsifying a doctor's note as to why you missed class or things like that. Even, even if it seems like a little thing, Falsification of documents is academic dishonesty, uh, and it's as simple as that. Theft of intellectual property is another form of dishonesty that we want to avoid in academic integrity and academic honesty. Uh, when when somebody else has a good idea, then then tell where it came from. Not only in a in the sense of plagiarism, but just stealing somebody else's idea, taking credit for their work um, without you know any acknowledgement or any compensation or whatever um, is an issue. So. You need to be aware of intellectual property as well as other types of, uh, of theft. It's just as bad as stealing somebody's car. So um, that would be academic dishonesty as well. All of this really goes into building trust, and we need trust amongst uh, the faculty and students and students with students and as 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 researchers and, and people pursuing a higher level of knowledge. We need that trust to build upon. So uh, we need to be able to present without deception present ourselves, present our material, present our findings, present our studies, uh, present our, our work in general, whatever it is, present all of that without deception uh, and be very transparent about things and uh, and just, just keep that in mind, present without deception. Plagiarism obviously is a very uh, important topic in higher ed and uh, so plagiarism, there's obvious forms of plagiarism that most people know about when you take something, you copy it off of the internet or whatever, Present it as your own and don't give credit where credit is due. That's obviously plagiarism. That's intentional plagiarism. But even things like when we when we find something on the internet, find a source, find a book, find a journal article, whatever, and we include it and we fail to, to cite that source, either in our paper or in our presentation or whatever, that is plagiarism. Whether it was intentional or not, that is plagiarism. Uh, and one of the hardest ones for students to really wrap their minds around is the idea of self-plagiarism. Uh, which is essentially where you know you created this project, this paper, this presentation, whatever it is, you created this work for a particular class, right? Then next semester you have a class where you think, well, that same thing will just work there. So you present the exact same paper as a part of this class. So uh, that's that's self plagiarism. You created it for one thing, you can't use it just word for word in another, you know. So um, so we need to be aware of that. It, it, it's different to use the same body of research, what I call the same body of research. If you did a, a report for your history class on, I don't know, German World War II tanks, right? And uh, and you you have another class where you think, well, that, that same topic will work for my paper. You can't just submit that same paper, but what you can do is use that same body of research. Now you know where to go to find those materials. You may have even saved some of those. So you can use that same body of research to create a new paper and create a new presentation or whatever it is. Um, and that's not self-plagiarism, but when you just take one paper from a class, submit it for another class, and the same thing, that's self-plagiarism. That's not original work, uh, and, and that's that's an issue in, in higher ed, so keep that in mind. Receipt of unacknowledged assistance. Okay, this isn't middle school or elementary school where you create the volcano and your parents help you and do most of the work. Actually, your dad stays up until 3 in the morning building this thing, and then you take it in and say, here's my volcano, and never, never say that. And that's one thing in elementary school, right? We don't do that in higher education, and we don't do that in, in you know, with professional standards either. So, uh, when you receive assistance from somebody, you give them credit, right? And you don't take credit for their work. You acknowledge 
what they did, what they contributed, and what you contributed, and how that was divided up, and where it came from, and why it came to be that way, and all those types of things. So we're going to acknowledge uh, assistance that we receive, and uh, in order to, all of these things in order to to build trust. And really, this comes back to the honor system. I mean, you know, are you going to get caught every time you plagiarize? Probably not. Probably not. Although it's more evident than you might think for most instructors. But uh, or when you don't acknowledge somebody's, then, you know, probably not. But but first of all, we need to have personal integrity and personal honor. We need to be able to look at ourselves in the mirror every day and say, you know, I did what I think was right today. Uh, and we need to, to, you know, just acknowledge the honor system that, that your faculty and your your co, uh, cohort of students and your coworkers in the professional world are, are trusting you to, to have that integrity and to have that uh, sense of honesty and, and academic honesty and otherwise. So, um, so we need to acknowledge the honor system and really uh, hold to that as our standard. Then, uh, fairness is important in academic uh, honesty in terms of keeping the playing field level, in a sense, right? Uh, and and we can have another discussion about the difference between equality and equity. Um, those are two. Those are two different things. But uh, but in fairness, what we're really talking about is avoiding what we call unfair advantage, uh, something that gives somebody a head start or gives somebody. Uh, step up uh, over somebody else that, that, again, doesn't create that level playing field that creates a, a, an unlevel playing field. So uh, some things we want to avoid to, to make sure that we're not pro producing an unfair advantage. First of all, obtaining prior access to information isn't isn't fair. So if you, you know, happen to stumble across the, the answer key for an exam that's coming up three weeks before the exam or a week or any time before the exam, um, and you're the only one who has access to it, and it's you know not something that's given to you in faith. But uh, um, then you need to understand that that prior access creates an unfair advantage for you over the other over the other students, and so uh, we want to avoid things like obtaining prior access, right? Uh, we want to avoid pro providing access ourselves to other people. So you had this class last semester and you happen to still have the exam and the answers or whatever. Uh, providing that to somebody else would be an issue. Providing a paper for them would be an issue. Providing access to them uh, in advance on um, something that, that they should not have that will create that unfair advantage for them over the other you know, students in that class is, uh, is not fair. And it's you know, a violation of academic integrity. Uh, the use of, use of unauthorized aids. So um, things like you know, cheat sheets are obviously not good. You know, writing the answers on your hand is not uh, not allowed, or on your shoe, or whatever you're going to do. Uh, those types of things, using using technology to, that's not allowed, uh, whether whether it's really explicitly stated or not, is is an issue. If you, again, if you have questions in the back of your mind about is this allowed, is this is this also authorized, then either need to ask to clarify. Or just avoid it, because if you're having questions about it, then there must be something that's leading you to have those questions and those pangs of guilt or whatever. So um, the use of unauthorized aids, uh, and again, a lot of this comes back to the honor code. Sometimes if you're in an online class, it's harder to check those things, you know. So um, so the honor system comes into play, although it's not as hard as you would think. It's easier to spot those types of cheating than you would think, even in an online class, but uh, but the use of unauthorized aids is, uh, creates an unlevel playing field and, and provides an unfair advantage for you. We need to have respect. This is a big part of academic honesty and academic integrity as well. We need to have respect for others, and, and when we give respect, then we get respect, right? So uh, we need to avoid inappropriate and disrespectful behavior just in a broad sense, right? Avoid things like name calling or you know trying to antagonize somebody or just you know, all those things that we should have left behind in middle school uh, we want to avoid those types of inappropriate and disrespectful behaviors okay? i always tell my students act like your mom is in the room and that you know a lot of people would understand that but act like your mom sitting in the back of the room keeping an eye on you would your mom approve of this would she you know that type of behavior so so imagine if your mom was in the room with you uh, we need to avoid disruptive or threatening behavior. Obviously, that's a violation of respect as well. Um, anytime we're threatening somebody or anytime we're doing anything that's disruptive in the classroom. Um, now, this is a personal philosophy, and a lot of instructors don't don't follow the same philosophy, but I've always had the philosophy of it doesn't bother me if you come into the classroom. If you want to sleep, if you want to, if you want to play on your phone the whole class, I mean, that's fine. Uh, my problem is when it starts to disrupt or distract other people. So um, when you're when you're eating something that's so loud that everybody else is distracted by that, or when you're you know, 
you're watching something on your phone and all of a sudden a video comes on and sound blares out everyone throws everything off that's disruptive behavior it, it, again threatening behavior is a totally different thing and you can probably understand that but even that disruptive behavior is disrespectful to your instructor disrespectful to the rest of the students you know what you choose to do during classes is is up to you but we want to avoid anything that's going to be disruptive in a virtual environment if you that includes you know if you're on zoom for a class if you're or uh, some other virtual platform for a class and you have your video and audio on act like you're in the classroom act like you're in the classroom uh, don't do anything you know or, or shut off your video and shut off your audio and just listen for a while if it's going to be disruptive so keep those types of things in mind I, this kind of gets into this anything that obstructs or interferes with another's work is a lack of respect so I had a situation where i was teaching a public speaking class one time and a student was giving a speech on a fairly controversial topic no matter what it was but it was a fairly controversial topic and there was somebody in the class who the whole time disagreed with it obviously because the whole time this student was speaking all you could hear was ah oh, oh, you know every 10 seconds they would say something oh gosh and then under under their breath he would say you know stuff like oh you gotta be kidding me I mean, that, that can, you can understand that can really throw somebody off while they're giving a speech. That obstructed with his ability to give a speech. I'm not asking that other student to agree with what this person said. They didn't have to be persuaded by it. But they did owe it to him in the classroom to, to provide that respectful behavior and not obstruct or interfere with their work. So keep that in mind. Anything that's going to obstruct with or, or interfere with another person's work is showing a lack of respect and, and would violate academic honesty and integrity. Obviously, misuse of, of university resources as well. So if you're using, you know, the university computer lab or using the, even the university's Wi-Fi or Internet or whatever, um, then what you do on that computer is really university resources. So, you know, you shouldn't be doing things like running a business or doing things like that on there, but also just um, just be aware that, that integrity extends to all these different university resources. They're there for you to take advantage of and to, to utilize, but don't take advantage of them in a bad way. Right? Don't don't abuse um, what the university is providing for you. Uh, so to be sure we're not misusing those university resources. And finally, we want to talk about responsibility. And this is such a cruise. This is the linchpin for all this. Um, uh, we need to first know the standards of our institution. You ought to know what the academic honesty and integrity code is for your institution. And if you don't, go find it right now and uh, and review that and make sure that you are in line with that policy because it's up to you to know those standards and to, to be able to, to follow them, to acknowledge them and be able to follow them. Right? We also need to understand then what the penalties are for a violation. If we need to know what those rules are and know what's going to happen if we violate them uh, and, and be responsible for that, understanding that, that these things do carry penalties a lot of times. So understand that if we violate some, choose to violate that, that policy, then um, then, then there'll be a penalty. Uh, we also need to understand that silence is complicity. If we see somebody cheating, we see we know somebody's doing something that's outside of the realm of academic honesty. We can't say, "Well, it's too bad that they're doing that," but it doesn't have to do with me. So, you know, whatever. No, if we if we see something, we need to say something. Silence is complicity. If you're silent, if you see somebody doing something like that and you are silent, then you are essentially doing it yourself. You should think of it that way. Um, so, silence is complicity and not. Uh, acceptable under the standards of academic honesty. And finally, ignorance is not a valid excuse. You can't just say, oh, well, I didn't know. I mean, we just talked about how you need to know the standards of your institution. Uh, I didn't know that was a violation. Well, you better find out. You better know in advance, uh, because not knowing is not going to be an excuse. Not understanding what plagiarism is doesn't excuse you from from committing plagiarism and being penalized for that, right? Um, so, anyway, uh, we need to understand that just not knowing about something is not enough of a valid excuse to avoid responsibility for that. In the end, you are responsible for your own academic integrity and academic honesty, which starts with knowing what is involved there, knowing what your institution's policies are, what the uh, penalties are going to be for that, and then following through with those things and, and not saying, well, I didn't know. That's not That's not an excuse. Again, overall academic honesty and integrity just so important uh, to the whole structure of higher education and to, it's not just about having rules it's about creating people who know how to uh, behave like mature adults and know how to uh, to engage in their work with honesty and integrity so just really important 
you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me. I'm always happy to respond to questions about, about academic honesty or anything else. Um, just feel free to shoot me an email. And in the meantime, just really go about um, doing things the right way and engaging in academic honesty.